everyone, and welcome to the ThoughtWorks Technology Podcast. My name is Neil Ford. I am one of your regular hosts, and we normally have a co-host, but we don't today because we have three guests, all with a very particular, unique perspective on our topic today. Uh, today, we're going a little bit meta and behind the scenes on the ThoughtWorks Technology Radar, which if you're listening to this podcast, you are no doubt familiar with. If you're not, take a moment to go to ThoughtWorks com slash radar and you will see what it looks like. What we're going to be talking about today is how that thing is created and talk to uh, several of the people who have been very intensely involved in the creation behind the scenes uh, of this radar. Uh, and I'll get them to introduce themselves and a little bit about themselves and uh, where they fit uh, and where uh, within the era of the, uh, the ThoughtWorks radar. So we'll start with you, uh, Marissa, because you're the current TA and uh, going to be present for the next radar. Yes. Hi, my name is Marissa Honig. I am the current technical assistant for the CTO at ThoughtWorks, which means I'm also the product owner for the Tech Radar. I started last year back in 2022, so I've done one radar, our volume 27, and I'll be doing the next, I don't know, three or four or so. Um, and it's a really cool thing to be a part of. Um, from, you know, coordinating all the writing to the translations and copy edits and seeing it finally go live. So I'm really excited to be here and to be in this role. Awesome. I'm Perla Villarreal. I'm a lead consultant at ThoughtWorks. I was in Marissa's role as the technical assistant of the CTO and the product owner of the Radar not too long ago, for about two and a half years. Um, I joined in 2020 and stepped out late last year, late 2022, um, right, joining right at the epitome of the pandemic and all the changes that were coming with that and moving into a remote world. Um, but it was, it was great and I miss it already. So looking forward to the chat. Hi, I'm Camila Crispin. Uh, I work at Thoughtworks Brazil. Uh, this month, end of the month, is actually my 10-year uh, anniversary at ThoughtWorks. Um, I've done many roles, uh, but lately I am the technical director uh, for the Nearshore market uh, in Brazil. I'm also part of the TAB group who is responsible for creating uh, the, the, the tech radar. And I was TA technical assistant for the CTO back from 2017, 2016 to 2018. So um, I have both sides of how we create the radar, let's say. Yes, indeed. Uh, Camilla has the, the unique position of having sat in both seats of, uh, of a content creator and also the TA role. So all of these folks who have joined me today have uh, uh, played the role of assistant to Rebecca Parsons, who is our CTO. And that job is not only the radar. It's got a lot of stuff in it, but it includes the ownership and other uh, aspects of the radar that uh, Marissa was talking about. Um, so let's talk a little bit about yeah, where this thing started. The, the technology radar was a purely accidental artifact uh, because Rebecca has this group, the technology advisory board that gets together and advises her about technology. So it's a, it's a well-named board uh, since she is the CTO. Um, and one of the things that that group started talking about were interested technologies that we were playing with or had seen at client sites. And we thought it was really interesting that we were curating this list from, from in the entire world because this group encompassed all the offices that we had. And, and the very first visualization of the radar, so as, as we mentioned, volume 28 is coming up. There have been 28, 27 of these up until now. Volume one was actually created by another uh, technical assistant, uh, Darren Smith, uh, who created it in Keynote because that was the best drawing tool that he had. But it has evolved into a very, very complex uh, process. So Camilla is the earliest one in the, the creation process. So uh, And she got handed over a process that it consisted of. So ThoughtWorks used to make this project tracking tool called Mingle, uh, where a lot of the material was captured, but then it was, well, let's let Camilla describe some of the, the, the process that you inherited as a TA for creating a radar. 
Oh my God. Yeah. So we used Mingo to track uh, the progress of the writing, uh, but you have to um, import all the bleeps that actually got uh, to the radar in that uh, specific edition. So there's a lot of like export, import, spreadsheets, and and, and a, a little bit of hacking as well. Uh, and the first time that I saw that, and Siemens, who was the former TA and, and was handing over the, the radar to me, she had this very step-by-step process, uh, very kind of uh, specific. And I was looking at it for the first time and like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to reproduce this. I'm going to fail so much at, at helping this group uh, build the radar. But it turns out... Um, she was actually able to support me in uh, first the first radar that I was doing by myself. Uh, we had that for quite a while. The Mingo was the source of truth uh, for the whole history of the blades that made to the radar. Uh, and then the TA that um, knew when she was after my time, she actually was the one responsible for the transition because we were sunsetting Mingo, if I recall correctly. And we had to find some something else <laughs> to to help track the, the process. So let's let's catch up on some terminology for those who may not be familiar. The blips. So the way that this thing comes about is that the, the members of this group bring a lot of candidates to this meeting, and those are are known as blips. And then we go through in a very intense face to face session. Uh, put an asterisk around the face-to-face part of that. We'll get back to that in just a second. (laughs) Uh, uh, To discuss the things that should be there, the things that shouldn't, are they appropriate, et cetera. And and what Camilla is talking about is the output of that intense face-to-face session, which has been captured. And then after that meeting, each person who is nominated one of those things has to write up the context that shows up on the radar. And then the TA has to take all the blips and all the content and the positioning, et cetera, and create some sort of cohesive holes. So Mingle was basically, as Camilla said, our source of truth. We're using it like we're using uh, Git now. We're using uh, uh, GitHub repositories now uh, to to store that. But it was Mingle plus some spreadsheets and a little bit of voodoo magic and some other stuff to, you know, uh, transform all of these things into from one uh, part to another. Uh, Then Camilla turned that over to me and she was the first one who had to, at the last minute, accommodate uh, the pandemic, which is in the early 2020s. Now, we had always claimed that it was absolutely impossible to do a radar if we couldn't gather face-to-face because it's such an intensely collaborative meeting. And then we were, of course, proved wrong uh, by the global pandemic. And and so Nee did some magic with a, a shared Google spreadsheet, and that's what we've been using uh, to track the, uh, the the radar uh, when we did it remotely. So let's let Perla talk a little bit about this, this spreadsheet that she suddenly inherited, uh, which is one of the more complex spreadsheets I've ever seen, and it gets updated by a, a global group of 25 people in real time constantly. So let's let her describe that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. That spreadsheet, I think I've had several different people reach out interested in how the radar is put together or interested in creating their own mini radar. And they always want to see the spreadsheet. And I always know it's a mistake to show the spreadsheet. It is very intimidating just the amount of information that it holds. But I also think it's interesting how well the team works together to to kind of make that all like that's all information that was being held in a lot of team members heads throughout the whole conversation that we now have like a space for. So the spreadsheet essentially is our documentation and momentary source of truth during the face-to-face meeting, virtual meeting, during the discussion meeting that this group has. And eventually all of that is moved into a much more stable environment Um, But it is a spreadsheet that kind of really works through all of the proposed blips that we have across our many countries within ThoughtWorks. Um, I've seen the spreadsheet start with over 300 blips that are proposed, and it speaks to 
all the technology that people are interested in speaking to. It has descriptions of them, conflictive information about them as well. I think one of the things that's most fascinating to see all of that in one space at once, because with the spreadsheet, while we were remote, we spent a lot of time anticipating the discussion. Like we have all of this to go through. How do we make sure we prioritize the right conversations? And it's always interesting to see that the spreadsheet really shows where we're having similar conversations across the world or very different conversations across the world about the same technologies. So the spreadsheet is a really interesting visual that I don't think we had previously. Um, It's all I knew during my time as a technical assistant, but there's so much value in that. I think it also, it holds space for that conversation. So a lot of times I also found myself going back to understanding that progression of information. Um, We start with so many blips, we bring them down to a much smaller amount, about 100. And sometimes we end up with blips that weren't even in that original listing. And that, I think, transformation of information and decision making, it really comes alive through that spreadsheet. Well, there are at least two super interesting things that you mentioned there. One of them was the uh, visualization that we used live that we ended up recreating in the spreadsheet. Because one of the things that we learned early on in these meetings, when you have such a group of people and they're all, of course, opinionated, uh, you want to try to reach consensus as quickly as possible. And Rebecca does a brilliant job of steering this uh, group of uh, unruly cats to, to get them and herd them in the right direction. Uh, but one of the things that we implemented early on was this system where everybody is issued, when we're in person, three index cards, a red one, a yellow one, and a green one. And when a topic comes up, there'll be a broad vote, which is, what do you think about this? And green means I agree, red means I disagree, and yellow means let's have a discussion about it. And that was recreated in the spreadsheet in a brilliant way because every person has a column and it has three values, which is red, green, or yellow. And you can just flip those when topics come up. And we've actually adopted that now for the in-person meetings because the visualization is so nice. And and we still use the cards uh, for the visual effect, but uh, it's a really nice way of uh, capturing something that started out very much as an in-person uh, thing and, and and moved into the uh, the real world uh, or the uh, the virtual world the, the anti real world or virtual world um, and Camilla can probably say something about just the volume of information that gradually has been collected about this because it started you know literally as just a little bit of text and rings but now there's all this metadata and other stuff that has been captured in in the various uh, pieces of software and I think it's a little bit of a tribute to Mingle that. It did what we're using three different pieces of software to do now, because it used to manage a lot of this. And now we're using GitHub and Trello and uh, several other things to do the, the same work. So what about the information we're gathering here? Well, if I can be honest, I think now we are using the right tools to do the right things. Uh, I don't think Mingo was <laughs> actually the place to hold uh, the blip history and 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it was uh, it was very easy to get it wrong as well. And, and uh, Berla was uh, talking about uh, the virtual meeting. It was my first meeting as a, do- uh, as a tab member. Um, it was my first meeting as a tab member. Um, mm-hmm. And it was very impressive how the process, like how we got to that point of like so many fancy uh, things. By my time, uh, I had, and I think I was the first uh, non-English native speaker who had the TA role. Uh, And I had to like write notes, record the decisions of like, is this blip uh, making to the radar or not? And I was so nervous because I was like the, sitting uh, by Rebecca's side that I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get all this wrong. Uh, And, you know, it's a lot of people. uh, They speak very fast. 
and the conversation flows. It can go very quickly. So it was a challenge to me um, by that time. I think my English improved a little bit uh, during this period. Um, but I think having all these uh, right tools now, it makes the process more verifiable, let's say. Uh, it's easier to, to double check things. It's not only like you and the, the Google Docs that you are literally trying to write every single word. Um, you have uh, a better way to, to track it. And we also, as uh, folks who are going to write the blips later on, uh, have something to go back to and say, okay, this is, and, and recall the, the conversations um, in a much easier way and get the context and be, uh, um, write better blips um, and, and um, texts to, to the radar audience, which I think it's very important. Well, and, and it's even more doubly important because this is not just a, a, a recording of the events that you can take all the time you want to think about later. There has to be instantaneous results while we're all there face to face, because one of the things that Rebecca tries to herd us toward is a reasonable number of uh, blips on the eventual radar. And so there's this real need to have, you know, pretty much real time information about how many are there, how many are in each place, et cetera. So that has been a real struggle because there have been so many manual pieces of the process. And and that's something that the automation has gotten more and more impressive uh, uh, over time. and. Uh, you know, because it's such an intensely manual process and, you know, there's a lot of coordination, et cetera, it was always done in a, a kind of a formal handoff where, you know, two TAs would be at the same meeting so they could see all the processes, et cetera. Uh, and then we had the grand plans to do that uh, for uh, the handoff between Perla and Marissa. But then... This global pandemic thing inserted itself. So Marissa got the uh, in the interesting experience of getting to do it for the first time live without having an in person handoff. So let's let's hear a little bit about what that was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to get to do a face to face in person in Barcelona uh, back in October. So that was really awesome and. While, yes, Perla wasn't there in person, she was still kind of whispering in my ear the whole time, like she was chatting me while things were going on. So it felt like I had her there with me. Um, but it was a different experience because Perla had never gotten the chance to do the in-person one. And I was going off of kind of like what she knew of the radar, what I kind of gathered from different resources. And so a lot of it, I was asking Rebecca, hey, like, how, how does this work? What, what do you do in this session? Should I be taking notes? Like, what's going on? Um, and it's crazy, like Camilla was saying, how fast everyone talks. And I just have to sit there almost like a zombie, just like typing notes and like trying to remember who's speaking. Like, I would look up and be like, oh, yeah, like, that's Neil speaking. Neil. And then I'm typing exactly what you're saying just to keep a record of the conversation. Um, and it's, it's like, you don't even know how crazy the radar is until you experience <laughs> it. I feel like Perla kept telling me that <laughs> when we were onboarding, she was like, trust me, it's going to be rough. And I was like, no, like I, I feel good. Like everything's fine. And I was like, oh my God, wow, this is intense. But, um, I feel a lot better about it now that I've done one, even though she couldn't be there in person. So, Perla, did you ever get to do a face-to-face -face one, even when you got handed over to from me, or did you? Was everything you did remote? All of the radars I helped produce were remote first. Um, there was mm. one radar volume, February of 2022, where we had smaller pods. So I had the opportunity to work with a few folks in North America. We all met in New York City. Um, we also had Scott come from Australia, which was great in terms of time zones. Um, but otherwise, no. And even that face to face in person, we weren't, we were really trying to be remote first, not make it feel like anyone is being left out. So my, my duties in person were very different than the ones Marissa had because I was chasing down monitors, making sure everyone had more than one monitor to feel comfortable, comfortable in their space. And making sure that, you know, we were still all up and ready at the office at six in the morning, which is usually not when the office is open. 
So the logistics were very different for that. But for the most part, I I was the remote only TA for, <laughs> throughout throughout the five radars that I helped produce. It's an amazing uh, bit of work to be able to create one of those things uh, remote. So and especially given that you basically did it uh, uh, all of your times remote, which is really tough. And and when we were face to face in in February, there were still COVID protocols and a bunch of other stuff because it was still February twenty twenty two. So it was the variants were so it was yeah very very complicated. So. The only person on our call that's actually sat on both sides of the table is Camilla, who was Rebecca's TA for a while and then spent some time working on projects, et cetera, and then has made it back on to the, uh, the advisory group. So what's what's the difference between those two? Uh, what's the perspective shift uh, from one seat to the other? Oh, my God. I think the first difference is as a tab member, like non-TA, uh, you can actually sleep. Uh, you know, <laughs> because when you are the TA, you, I, well, it's very hard to sleep because you're always thinking about is everything set up? Uh, do I have everything right? I need to do the import to Mingo. So tomorrow I can double check and see, you know, sometimes the, the post-its will fall from the, the, the wall and, and all that. So we'd have to go very early in the morning to kind of double check and make sure everything was right. Um, but I also, um, as, as the TA, I was desperate to get the recordings of the uh, which plates made to which each place and the, the notes as well. And my notes was pretty bad. Um, but now <laughs> being the one who's going to write the blips, the notes are so important to get the context, to reach out to the right people. Because during my time, I was like, yeah, they're going to figure it out. Like, you know, you don't have much time actually to think about, oh my God, I got nothing from this discussion. It was such a consensus that we move very, very quick, right? Uh, but now I actually need uh, the notes to 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 write the blips. Um, and, you know, the pressure of... Uh, having someone saying we have this many blips left, we have this many blips left. When I was that one a couple of years ago, actually saying, "Oh, you're gonna miss the opportunity to talk about this. Are you not gonna write it? Like, are you gonna sleep? Because we need this to <laughs> is this done? Uh, so this it's a, a, a shift. Uh, but then you having both perspectives, you realize that every single part of the process and every single person, they are equally important in order to get the radar out. So that's, that's very cool. So I'll ask each of you in turn something that, you know, uh, was unexpected when you started uh, doing this or something that would surprise someone about, you know, the creation of the radar or, you know, uh, or something that people might not understand about it, et cetera, some insight that you would get from, uh, from your unique role. So. Uh, what about you, Marissa? You're the the uh, the the one who's done them the least, so I'll uh, pick on you first. <laughs> wow, I don't know if that sounds good or bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I feel like one of the most surprising things, at least during the meeting, was just how fast we go through each blip. And so when thought workers around the globe are proposing blips, and they have, I don't know, a two sentence paragraph or like five sentence, whatever. The more information we get really helps the case by the tab member to say, hey, actually, like, we should really put this in adopt or we should put this in trial. If we don't have a lot of information, often it just gets shot down and it's done. Um, so sometimes it's like if you really want to blip on the radar, you should put a lot of evidence in there and explain how it got used, put like the pros and cons of it, and that will help have a better discussion and have a better chance of getting on the radar. I think that's uh, Perla and Camilla both uh, alluded to that. I think that's one of the things that the remoteness has forced us to do is better preparation and a little more detail in those, whereas a little more seat of the pants in Camilla's day when everything was face to face and it's a little more formal now. So that's actually one of the the uh, improvements. Um, so Perla, what a, what what uh, unusual thing would you uh, think about uh, this role? Yeah. I don't know if unusual, but I think shortly after producing five radars with um, 
the tab at ThoughtWorks, I actually had the opportunity to also jump in and try to do this with a client. And that's when I think in terms of insight, what really hit me is how important the community aspect that the tab has, the respect they have for one another, the room for all voices. They're, every voice on that group is loud, yet there is room for every single voice. Like the way Rebecca facilitates it's magical. I watched it for two and a half years and I still don't know how to put it in writing, like what she does. But it's also, I think, the group and the respect they have for one another, for the work that they do, for the experiences that they have. And when you see the client opportunity that I had, it was a, it was like a very, a lot of the people hadn't interacted with each other before. It was their first radar that they were trying to put forward. And it's like stepping stones. You really first want to make sure we can all talk about this, disagree about it. That's okay as well. And understand where those disagreements are coming from. And I think that's that's what I walked away super impressed with and surprised by just how important that seems like very like minor thing, but I'm sure like the in-person aspect helped a lot like as that group has transitioned but then there's also people who have been on this group for years and the way we talk internally and culture within ThoughtWorks I think also helps mitigate a lot of that and of course like the facilitation that comes from making sure we all have a room for conversation we all get a vote Um, sometimes it's a tight vote sometimes we come back to it we get second opportunities I think that is kind of the insight I would share to anyone trying to put a radar together for themselves or for their organizations. Make sure you build that community, that team of people who really want to work and grow together because that's what will make the reflection valuable. I also have a theory exactly to your point that part of why that group functions so well is because it is a group of fairly senior technologists and we are very used to pitching ideas that get shot down and not get mad about it when it happens because it happens so much and you know you're just happy when it actually gets accepted so I, I think that actually helps because I've seen other groups within ThoughtWorks struggle with some of the large group dynamics that that, that group doesn't seem to struggle from. So I attribute it to being mostly a, a group of technologists and, and being accustomed to disappointment. <laughs> and to, to your point, Neil, I was actually, when I got home back uh, from the face-to-face in, in Barcelona, I was actually sharing uh, some thoughts around this. Like, I pitch some blips and it was challenged and people were just like pretty much saying it's a bad idea or this doesn't sound right. Uh, but I, I didn't, it, it was not personally. Uh, I didn't take it personally and, and they were not intended to be like something on like to me. It was to the idea. And that was pretty clear in the, the conversation, right? So I think it, it's not even that we are mature. It's just very respectful the way that we disagree as well and and this is uh, this is something unusual you, you don't always get this <laughs> uh, <laughs> in in all places all discussions especially about technology right mm. well I, I think there's a strong desire to get it right you know, uh, you know as right as we can as a group uh, and, and that overrides a lot of the other interpersonal stuff that might you know cloud judgment but that they that's just a, a, an aspirational goal, if, if nothing else. So, what? A, so, uh, Marissa, you're about to launch into the next uh, radar. Any uh, any uh, ideas you have for improvements or any behind the scenes stuff you're thinking about uh, implementing for the next round? Very, yeah, very interesting question. I feel like we've had a lot of conversations recently about, you know. Can we add other features? Can we get other people involved? Um, how can we really continue making it better? Um, none of it is really confirmed yet. Nothing is really <laughs> figured out. Um, but on my side, I'm trying to just improve some of the processes that I have to go through. Um, as you heard from the other two also, it's a crazy process. Like I feel like every day you're working a lot of hours just to make sure it gets through the door and it's per- perfect to as perfect as much as it can be. Um, And so I want to just make it easier on myself so I'm not so stressed out during that time. So that's going to be, you know, fixing up some of those scripts that we have that kind of 
move things between Trello and Google Docs and back to Trello and back to Google Docs and, you know, the whole process. So the hacks are still there. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're still scripts. <laughs> um, so trying to improve some of those before we jump into the next one. Well, I think it's uh, a, a tribute to Rebecca's uh, skill in choosing TAs that uh, no TA has ever just taken the previous process as a cargo cult and, and decided not to touch it and just try to leave it as magic. They've always dug into it and figured out ways to improve it. And it's and the it's markedly improved. Well, Camilla can uh, attest to that, the, the difference between uh, the era that she was dealing with it and, and the era that we've seen now. So one last question for each of you, if you could give yourself at the, at the and, and Marissa can't really answer this one yet, at, at the end of your tenure as a TA, if you could have given yourself a piece of advice from the beginning of your tenure, what would that piece of advice be uh, for the, the the thing that you kind of unexpectedly learned during your, your time? And that tenure usually lasts, what, about two and a half or three years uh, per, per person. Uh, so uh, what do you think, Perla? Any, any advice you would give to your slightly younger self about uh, that role? Absolutely. And I gave Marissa this advice too, I think. And I received it multiple times early on, but it's chaos. But I think it would be to take a moment to really take it in. So like Camilla was saying, you know, when you're a TA, you're really listening to everything, taking notes, double checking, making sure the right decisions were made and documented. And there's very just rich technical conversations that you're documenting you just you're but you're acting like a robot to some extent early on especially I'll also say that too Marissa it gets easier even without process changes it gets easier you start acting like like a process yourself um so that's what I would say like really you're amongst such rich conversation there's you're amongst rich times like technology continues to evolve drastically month by month, I would say, and we're having different conversations. And that's part of the reason we try to get the radar out, out the door as soon as we can, because these conversations continue to evolve. So what I would say is that, like, I would tell myself to like, also, you know, as you're documenting all these blips, I read them, I don't know, like 20 times before they're published, but really taking in like what's there. I think now as I'm coming back into professional services, going back and understanding that the radar tells a story across like volumes, even during one set volume, but as you see all the information, so take it in as like an asset and take advantage of your, your experience as you're, you know, doing it and understanding your perspective. Like Neil said, there's different perspectives throughout the room and you're bringing one as well. So that's, that's what I would tell mm -hmm. my younger self. What about you, Camilla? I was going to say something similar um, that you at SDA, even though you are, you know, in the operational side of it, um, you are a contributor as well. And I, it took me some time to, to figure that out. Uh, even when Rebecca invited me back to the group uh, as a contributor, I was like, am I a contributor? <laughs> uh, but it, it looks like I am, and I'm uh, taking that, that, that place in that space. Um, but I think, I think that is also like the networking that you do, right? So take advantage of it. Um, there's a lot of um, luminaries from the uh, industry in that, in that room, in that group, uh, getting to know them, you know, their perspectives as well. Them, besides technology, which is also uh, important. Um, so um, that, that, that's something um, important. And it also took me some time to, to have the sense of like belonging, I guess. Uh, it was like, no, I'm just like this young lady here and they have like i don't know my age of experience right they're not gonna they don't want to talk to me but actually uh you have um uh, uh more recent experience than they do in terms of like hands-on um uh, project uh um context right so so it's always a, a, an exchange of experiences and 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 uh knowledge as well well, fantastic. 
Thank you so much for your uh, terrific insight, and I uh, hope uh, all of our listeners enjoyed getting a little behind-the-scenes uh, details behind uh, how the radar is created. Uh, and you'll get to see the next one uh, uh, crafted uh, by Marissa and a bunch of others uh, coming up before too long. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Hi, this is Rebecca Parsons. On the next edition of the ThoughtWorks Technology Podcast, I will be joined by three individuals, Rick, Anthony, and Kennedy, and we'll be discussing the challenges in scaling up an organization when you get conflict and tension between the product organization and the engineering organization. So please join me on the next edition of the ThoughtWorks Technology Podcast. Thank you. Thank you.